Lisa McCall and I'm with Polar Bears International and today I'm talking with polar bear scientists. Can you please introduce yourself everybody? I can. My name is Jody Reimer. I'm a PhD student at the University of Alberta studying predator prey and bears eating seals. Um, but I'm a mathematician, so I'm coming at it from the math side of things. I'm not a biologist, I just like to pretend I am. One thing that you work with is models. And we hear a lot about models often in the media, you know, climate models, but you can also make ecology models. Um, can you tell us a bit about, well, first of all, what, what is a model? Yeah, so a model is a, it's like a way to formalize these ideas we have about the world. And so we all kind of have an idea of how things work and we know, you know, maybe that polar bears eat seals and seals eat fish. And we kind of have these ideas and we can put them into words, but words aren't very good about making predictions or about um, being able to say what's really going on and how that might actually play out in real life and the logical implications of that. And so a model is a way to say, we think this is what's happening. Can we get that into the most precise format possible to make sure that we really understand and that we really can follow those ideas through to their logical conclusions? That's really interesting. It sounds really useful. How, how do you go about making these observations and then turning them into a model, a mathematic model. How does that even happen? So polar bear biologists, <laughs> the people who get to do the field work, uh, they go out and uh, they'll go and collect all the data. So I'm sure we've, we've talked to other people who get to we do that, a lot of the data. fun part. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and then they say, we have this idea about how something we think is happening, but we're not sure. So can you maybe think about that and make a model? It's my job or the job of a mathematical modeler to take those ideas and to make this the math that kind of represents them. So for the easiest example, uh, if you told me I think every, every day a polar bear eats one seal, and I could say, okay, so in the next seven days they'll eat seven seals. And then I could think, well, does that change with the seasons? And does that change with the number of seals and maybe with the number of bears? And so the math starts to be a little more than addition and multiplication, but that's kind of, you build it up from basic ideas that the biologists have. Obviously, we don't understand everything going on, and if we were to include all the information we have down to the level of, of atoms and, and cells, then right. we wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to do anything right. with we're it. We're only humans. Yeah. yeah. We can't, can't take Maybe everything. one day. One day. Um, but so the idea is to capture the important processes going on and to really understand how those affect each other. And so there's a, a bunch of standard methods for saying, does my model kind of, what I thought would happen, does it match what did happen? And can I go back into the past? And you know, if I'm trying to look into the future, what's often a good idea is to look into the past and say, we don't know what's going to happen, but I can look at what was going on 30 years ago. And if I apply it to that data, does it apply? Does it predict correctly the next 10 years, the next 15 years? And so there are a bunch of tests to make sure how closely does it match? Why do we think it doesn't match? Um, and in this way, we kind of pick between a bunch of different models. And we can say, given what we know, given that we're only human, um, we think this is the best model and these are the important things driving whatever we're observing. Interesting. So models might not be perfect, but they really can teach us a lot about what's going on, the different interplay amongst predators and prey and all the other things that you put into a model. Yeah. And, you know, they really give us a, a good idea, better than just our human brain saying, well, I think this is what's happening. Yeah, and the other thing is often our human brain isn't very good with not very good with probability. There have been a bunch mm -hmm. of studies done that show that probability and statistics aren't intuitive for a lot of us. And so what we might think would happen in 10 or 15 years, or what we think are the logical implications of our thoughts when we actually sit down and, sit and write them all out, and then you put that through your model, the output is often not intuitive. And so it gives us a way to check that our brains are matching, or are kind of being consistent within themselves. Seems like a pretty important process then. I for like it. Biology. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Really great. Well, thank you so much, Jody, for talking to us today about models. If anyone out there has a question for Jody, please email me at questions at pbears.org and I will pass your question on. And I can also film maybe another segment with Jody later in the summer if uh, people want to talk more about models. So thanks, everyone. Thanks, Jody, very much for thanks talking to me today. Bye. Thank you.